Our show is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phone, Kindle Fire, and other devices with Stitcher. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or on Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Pray with me if you will. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come with the fire and burn. Come with the rain and cleanse. Come with the wind and breathe. Come with the light and reveal. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us. Claim and call us with your care and concern, O God, until we do something. Amen. This evening's scripture is second gospel of Luke, or excuse me, gospel of Luke, second chapter, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Crianus was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, for which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you, for you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Luke, scholars tell us, has the most distinctly Jewish um, narrative of the birth of Jesus, both in tone and tenor, and it's also the most complete. Matthew has a, uh, a delineated genealogy, but nothing about really about the birth narrative. The... Um, Uh, Gospel of Mark has Jesus emerge as a full-grown adult uh, in the Jordan where he is baptized by his cousin John, and John's gospel goes all ethereal on us. Uh, He starts with a long narrative about logos, the word. Jesus was the word before there was time, uh, and so four separate versions, if you will, four separate gifts about the story of Jesus, none of them alike. Uh, It's little wonder that we sometimes hold on to the story. I was telling uh, uh, the uh, earlier service the same thing I'm I'm going to tell you, that we want to hear certain words. Some of us want to hear the King James Version. I can't speak the King James Version, my friend. I can only understand and read the Oxford Annotated. 
it, the new Oxford, new revised Oxford, annotated. Um, I had a fellow, perhaps, I don't know, five or eight years ago, phone me two days after Christmas and yell at me because I had destroyed his Christmas because the text read swaddling cloth, or bands of cloth rather than swaddling cloths. And if you look up in the dictionary, it, it does say uh, swaddling cloths are bands of cloth. But that's the kind of gift. We want the gift in our own time, in our own space, uh, and in words that bring us the comfort we, we desire. Uh, it's really important to us. So how do we get at the story and true meaning of Christmas for us? We get at that notion of what it means to give and receive, especially in this season. In today's uh, LA Times, uh, Steve Klaukens uh, wrote a story about, and I'm, I, forgive me for destroying his name, uh, Mikhail Kalas Kalinsnikov. Um, and if you don't know that name, you certainly know what he was about in his life. He invented the AK-47. And I thought, Christmas Eve, really? We're, we're doing a, uh, an obituary for the, uh, the inventor of the, probably the single most destructive weapon uh, known uh, outside of uh, atomic weapons. I started to read it, and I just couldn't abide, and I put it down, and then I came back to it, and I'm glad I did. Mr. Klaukens talked about Kalisnikov in really human terms. He was forced out of uh, his homeland when he was uh, a child, and um, his family was swept up and taken uh, to uh, Siberia. His father died because of the harsh conditions there. He escaped uh, in, um, at, at age 16. He only completed the sixth grade, and yet he invented this weapon that so many have used. I know that, that uh, drug dealers and terrorists use them, but it's freed country as well. It's an odd kind of position against the Prince of Peace and this instrument of death. In the article, um, Kalishnikov was quoted several years ago saying, I wish I had invented a farm implement which would have helped poor farmers like my father stay on their land. You think about what that means, the giving and receiving of such a gift. Just above it, another article about giving and receiving. Nila uh, uh, Lillefeld uh, wrote an article about Jim O'Connor. Jim O'Connor worked as an electrician in New York in the, the Lincoln and Holland tunnels. And he worked there until he was 30, and at age 30 he had finished night school and he had a degree in engineering, and he was coming to the promised land, California, to work in the aerospace industry. And here he came, and guess what? He didn't like the aerospace industry, so he figured he could teach. He spent another uh, year getting a teaching credential and became a math teacher because of his background in engineering, strength in that. And he worked for Harvard Westlake for 20 years, and then tried to retire and failed. And he still is working, he's in his 10th or 12th year, I think, at St. Francis, a good Catholic school not far from this place. And he is one tough dude as a math teacher. His teacher, his students are afraid of him. He's a Vietnam vet, he is tall and has the high and tight haircut and a military bearing and he, suffers no fools. He makes them do the work. So they think of him as just this tough guy. And Ms. Lillefeld uh, says that they found out by accident otherwise, his students. You see, they had a blood drive. And at this blood drive, they had to go to Children's Hospital. And there on the wall was a plaque 
to Mr. O'Connor for having been a blood and platelet, platelet donor. He is by far the, the uh, at Children's Hospital, the largest blood donor, over 75 gallons. That's gallons of blood he has given. But that's not why they love him, Children's Hospital. They love him because this tall, tough-looking guy is the go-to guy for dealing with the babies. He's never been married, he has no children, and yet he's the go-to guy. They ask him to hold the babies as they're dying, the babies who are receiving chemotherapy, as he has this mystical touch. He's the guy that can take a screaming infant and it will be quiet. And they say, the, his students, when the, two of them who hadn't yet seen him hold a child said, not Mr. O'Connor, I, I can't believe that, that he'd do that. And then they saw, they witnessed. And so he was asked, why with the babies? You've never been a parent? He said, there's something about, he said, I was nervous when I started, but there's something about holding a baby. He said, I can, as I'm rocking, I can feel my heart rate slow. I can feel the calm within me. And I can feel the spirit working through me. What are we giving? And what are we receiving at this season? I know that I used to scurry about and worry about whether the gifts were the right gifts. I don't do that quite as much anymore. I, I think about the quality of what I'm trying to give personally. Bookends of uh, two separate stories, but it's still about value and giving. I, one of my dearest friends in ministry is Dr. Eric Michael Smith. And Eric's late mother-in-law was... Um, a collector of fine antiques she bought and sold and consulted. And she was at a rummage sale, not her own uh, church. She was a United Methodist for all of her life. But she was at a rummage sale, and she always carried a jeweler's eyepiece to look at jewels. And she saw a piece, and she politely took it to the cashier and said, this is probably worth more than the $10 that you're asking. I suggest you take it back. And they said, no, it's $10 that we're making. So she bought it and gave it to her son-in-law and said, you should have this reset for my daughter. It was valued at $8,000. Giving, receiving, understanding value, understanding what it means to give. I used to live in Orange County. I wasn't born there. I was, I'm, I'm a foreigner. I was born in Michigan, but that was a long, long time ago. Not as long as the, the kings mentioned here, but a long time ago. But I spent most of 30 parts of my, 30 years of my life in Orange County in a, roughly the same seven mile radius. And my Mecca then was the South Coast Plaza at Christmas. I love to go there and shop. And one such outing, I uh, was uh, coming outside of one of the finer department stores and decided I'd stop and have a cup of coffee and some cookies. And so I, it was crowded and I had to share a table with another person. I was alone. And I shared this table with a woman, probably 10 years my senior, and I sat down after doctoring my coffee, and I sat down and opened the bag of cookies, or it actually was open, and I stuck my hand in and took a, a cookie out, and the woman nodded, and then she reached in and took a cookie out. And I kind of looked at her a little bit, but I thought it was Christmas, I could be generous. And then, she took another, and I took another, and finally, I thought, well, I've been generous, but I'm going to have the last cookie, so I took that last cookie. And 
She nodded. We never spoke. And I picked up my bags thinking, well, at least I got the last cookie. I walked to my car and I opened the hatchback at the end. And just as I reached down to pick up the last bag, I saw my bag of cookies. <laughs> who was giving and who was receiving? An obvious, obvious misunderstanding. I'm surprised she didn't strike me. The story of Christmas is the notion of what it means to give ourselves away. Jesus modeled it pretty well. Give ourselves away in a way that makes honest sense of what it means to love. I close with these words. Malvina Reynolds uh, wrote them. It was first published in 1955 in a uh, Methodist uh, uh, Obington Press, I think, and this, this one happens to be New Wine, which is about 45 years old, I think. And the words are, Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny, hold it tight, and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many to roll all over the floor. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you'll end up having more. So let's go dancing to the break of day, and if there's a piper we can pay, for love is something, if you give it away, you'll end up having more. Christmas, if it's real in any meaningful way, is about finding a way not to give pennies, but to give what's inside us in the name of love away. May it ever be so. Amen. Thank you for listening to the First United Methodist Church podcast which is recorded live every week at 4832 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood, California, and delivered by Dr. Joey McDonald. For more info on us, please check out nohofumc.com or find us on Facebook and Twitter under nohofumc. Thank you.